and welcome back to another uh, Mr. Pandaria Heroic Dungeon. Uh, today I am I'm Dave. I'm always Dave, but uh, today we're doing the Gate of the Setting Sun. I'll be playing the role of the healer as usual, and in the background you'll hear the music of Orgrimmar, my favorite background music for my heroic dungeon guides. I'm going to try and explain this to you as best as possible, so you can understand it and get it through. Um, Right here, we're just waiting for everybody to get grouped up. Obviously, this is sped up to about 200% to get it uh, moving along. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to walk down towards the first boss. Uh, simple mob clears here. Uh, you'll see that there is stuff on the ground. Um, the, the flames, uh, the bombs drop on the ground from the sky. Uh, they take a little bit of time to explode, but they always explode in a plus sign. So just uh, beware of those and just be weary and move out of the way of those because they can do some damage especially if you get hit with a couple of them at the same time the uh, the mobs here will put a uh, looks like dust on the ground but it doesn't uh, doesn't do any damage to the tank or any melee uh, fighters it actually just all it does is uh, prevent the or lowers the amount of damage that's being done by the people that are inside of it so the tank can move those around to make it a little bit easier to do a little bit more damage, especially for a melee um, DPS. Here you see there's a couple of annoying little guys that come from this top, um, and I got hit with one of those fire bombs. Uh, but once we get past this, we're going to go in and we're going to start fighting the first boss, Saboteur Kiptelak. Now, uh, just remember those those bombs that you were seeing being thrown, they're going to come up in this too. Uh, here, uh, usually mages, or you want to bl pop blood lust, you want to get something going, you want to burn him as quickly as possible. Uh, sabotage, you'll see, uh, he puts one of those bombs on you. When that happens, move out of the way. Uh, you can see those bombs being dropped on the ground as well in here. Um, as long as you're paying attention to where they are, you can pretty much avoid them. Uh, you're going to want to just burn him down as quickly as possible. That's why uh, blood lust or time warp is good for this first boss. And like always, remember when there is the sabotage on you, you want to move away from everybody because you're gonna you're gonna blow up like one of those bombs. No way to avoid that. And you can see it was a quick fight. We burned him down pretty quick. We're gonna move on towards the second boss now. Clearing packs of mobs here and there, you can watch. Uh, there's a couple of times where we'll just run through uh, without fighting anybody, and it tends to be the best option here. It's a little bit of a mishap here in this first encounter. I uh, lost sight of my tank, and he died. So we had another... Uh, we had a warrior with us that had to take over there for a second, and the, the shaman's helping me with a little bit of healing, because the warrior wasn't um, necessarily geared or ready to pull on the tanking. But uh, you just want to be careful on those stairs, because I lost sight of my tank, and I was not able to um, to heal him. You just want to want to make sure that you're communicating in that sense. <laughs> Moving on up, we're going to take a little hang a little right here. And right here we lost track of one of our, our guys we had to wait for him. But uh, while you're on these stairs, uh, there's being there's bombs and stuff hitting the side of it. And it does stun you a little bit. Uh, it doesn't do too much damage, if any. It just kind of like makes you stop moving for a minute. Here the tank's just going to spin through, get everybody's attention, and we're just going to run through. We're not going to stop and kill these guys. We're just going to run through because they actually can't come in to the next area that we're going into. Uh, everybody's going to get on this elevator. And we're going to head up to the next boss. <laughs> Alright, now this one is where there's a lot of communication that's going to be needed. Um, what he's going to do is he will drop bombs. Um, he's got his little guys throwing the, the acid on the ground. You want to stay out of that. It does do a decent amount of damage quickly. Now, the strafing run, when he goes over to one side, you can see he goes from one side of, uh, we'll call this platform a plus sign, he goes from one side to the other, always east to west or north to south, so um, you can see he goes uh, one way and then comes back the other way, so you just want to want to jump back and forth between the, the outer sides so you can avoid getting caught in inside of the flame. 
usually just follow the tank and the healer. They uh, will just go from one side to the next. Again, watch out for the green blobs that are being thrown. Here we just jump back to our original position while he bombs that side. Move out of the green. And then we're going to run back to where we were as he comes back the opposite way. Once you know the mechanics, he's a lot easier to handle than the first time you encounter him. Uh, like I said, watch out for the green on the ground as well as watch out for his strafing run. All right, now after we kill him, we're going to come over to these cannons. And uh, we're going to just click the crap out of these things because you're just going to want to uh, blow up all the guys that are in the sky. Um, go down in the elevator, and then we're going to head that way. Uh, just makes crossing this bridge a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to do that, but then you just have to watch out for bombs being dropped on you. Uh, since we blew them all out of the sky, we were able to advance across. There's a little cinematography here, and uh, we're back in. Now, normally, the boss is standing down, uh, at, bound by the stairs, but uh, we came out and he was right at the top of the stairs. This is uh, something we've never encountered before, so just be prepared um, that he may be there. Um, again, watch out for the green tank. You're just going to want to move him out of that stuff because it's preventing damage from being done fully, as well as doing a ton of damage to my warrior there, and he died. <laughs> Um, other than that, he's just got ads that he summons uh, right there. His little uh, fury of attacks. You just want to try and avoid getting caught in that because it will do a decent amount of damage. Burn him down. Easy boss. Nothing serious here. Like I said, normally he's down by the stairs. We happen to just catch him uh, possibly on a, um, a patrol and caught him at the top. Now here we're just resing everybody up, getting everybody back up and running. Uh, the last boss we're going to make our way towards is uh, Raygon. Now this is a giant beetle uh, who is very, very easy to handle. Not very difficult in any sense of the word. Uh, again here, the tank is just going to spin. Uh, we're actually going to jump down right here. I almost miss my landing and so does uh, the mage. mage actually dies because he missed it. the little uh, piece of wood sticking out but you can see the boss in the background there now what's going to happen is the tank is going to tank him like normal on the ground and um, I'm going to follow around the tank there's going to be some uh, cyclones I got to watch out for as the healer um, all of the DPS though are going to jump in these cannons and they're going to be blasted up onto his face uh, you have to you have to break it apart his or you have to defeat his weak spot first, which is his head. So the DPS are going to jump into these cannons. They're going to be launched up onto his head. Uh, Tank just has to watch out for those cyclones as well as uh, me as a healer. I need to watch out for those cyclones because it can prevent me from healing him and uh, him from uh, being able to do his tanking duties. Now, when he does the battering headbutt, he smashes his head against the wall and it throws all the DPS on the ground. It doesn't do too much damage, but uh, they just need to jump back into one of the cannons on the outside and they get launched up onto his face. Once we are on his face, you're able to do uh, your normal uh, attacks to take down his weak spot. Once that happens, everybody just jumps down on the ground. We time warp and uh, watch out for cyclones and that oozing pit in the middle and just burn him down very simple boss um, easy run easy heroic good gear uh, get your valor for the day I uh, hope this was helpful to you uh, if you have any questions put them in the comments I'll attempt to uh, answer them as best I can uh, if you like to give me a like give me a favor give me a subscribe um, stay tuned for some more heroic Mr. Pandaria dungeon guides I am Dave, by the way, like always, good luck and have fun.